Hi, I'm Carmen Alana Tibbetts. Joining me in the studio today is this Inca Dove, and I've just finished her shoulder and hip joints, which are made out of ordinary buttons. In today's video, I'm going to show how I cover these joints and how I use similar covered buttons in a variety of other sewing projects. We have our Inca Dove sitting here and she's ready to have her button joints covered. And you can see here one of the joints on the hip. It's just a plain old button and this is the linen thread that actually makes up the joint and it goes all the way through the hip and all the way back and I leave the, the tails long so that they don't come loose. And this is really isn't the prettiest thing to look at. So what I do is I cover these with cloth. Um, I don't use commercial covered buttons because it's too difficult to do the joints, or at least I think so, maybe I'm kind of lazy in that, but um, just normal buttons and then I have to cover them. So in this case I'm going to cover this button with the same fabric that I've made the dove with and I've cut out a circle that's about twice the diameter of the button. That seems to work out well. It doesn't have to be perfect. It could be a little bit bigger but bigger is probably better than smaller. Um, so you'll, you'll have some difficulty when you turn the cover under and you'll see that in just a second. So the next step is just to go along the edge, not too close, with a running stitch and I'm using um, upholstery thread or you could use buttonhole twist. You want something that's very thick and very strong because you are going to be pulling really hard and it's going to be under a lot of tension. Next I'm going to put a little circle of fabric just over the knot just to give it a little bit of padding. Let's see if I can get that to stay there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then you just put your circle of fabric over the top and then you kind of do this little pinch thing where you want to grab the button through that fabric and you can see where if you had it too small of a circle it's going to be kind of a tough thing to do. So kind of grabbed that and you want to make sure that the stitches are underneath and then you're pulling really hard and you kind of tuck and pull and then I like to do a loop around and then one final pull and then that's going to get it all underneath and you just do a simple little knot another yank and then I bury the edge of that underneath and snip and you're done. So now you have a nice covered button and all of that fabric is underneath here but it will not come out, it won't come undone and it won't fray and it looks so much better than that button before. So when you think about this you can use this technique in a lot of different applications. Now for people that sew clothes you're probably familiar with these little doohickeys and in this case you know you have like this little two-piece covered button you get these in kits and you have to get this separate and then it has a little thing to help you push so you put your fabric in and then you do this and then you know push 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 and then you come out with this beautiful covered button and these are great I love them but you have to go to the store you have to buy them which I don't like to do. Anybody that knows me is, knows I'm a notorious cheapskate. And then you may not get the size that you want. Sometimes you want something really small, sometimes you want something really big, sometimes the profile isn't quite what you're looking for. So I advocate just doing what people used to do in the old days and that's just covering your own buttons. So I'm going to do a little demo here. This is a ginormous button that I have uh, from a coat dress I'm reworking and it's nice and big so it's good for a demo and so in this case just any old button will do I have my circle of fabric about twice the diameter of the button and then I'm gonna put a little padding here to give the button a little bit of dimension and also if you have a really sharp edged button it helps to give a little bit of cushion along that edge. If you're using this for clothing, it helps to prevent the continuous wear as you are buttoning and unbuttoning your shirt or your pants or whatever. So you just 
put your padding in there, put your button in there. So I've done my running stitch along the outside. You just pull this up and then what I would do is just a whole bunch of stitches over here, get this down a little bit. You can trim off some of the excess in the middle, but then when you're done, you have your own covered button. Now this is great because maybe you're in the middle of a blizzard and you don't have time to run to the store to get some covered buttons for the silk shirt you're making. You can just use some scraps, some buttons from your button jar, and you are all ready to go. So I use these for a variety of different things. Here's an example of a little jacket that I made for a toad and I wanted something with kind of that bumpy warty texture and I thought about doing it with beads but I thought well you know what why not just make a whole bunch of covered buttons and in this case these are just various small buttons from my button jar and I covered them with different shades of gray and beige silk and then I sewed them on with some beads. If you're sewing these on for clothes, then you can just take a stitch in the middle. And I've seen a lot of very high-end clothes that have self-covered buttons like this. And they just have the, the stitch of thread over the top, and that's fine. If you don't like that look, then you can just use that wad of cloth underneath as a shank, as you would have with one of the metal covered button kits. Doesn't matter. They're really strong. I've used these on clothes. They don't come off, they don't wear in any funny way, they're great, they're inexpensive, they're adaptable, you can do all kinds of things, so give it a try.